Hey, I'm Pro Church Daily. We're talking about IGTV for churches. 15 things your ministry needs to know. Well, hey there, and welcome to Pro Church Daily, the show where in 10 minutes or less, you're going to get a daily dose of tips and tactics to help your church share the message of Jesus while we try and navigate the biggest communication shift we've seen in the last 500 years. I'm your host, Alex Mills, joined as always by the boss man, it's Brady Shearer, and today we're talking IGTV for churches, 15 things that your ministry needs to know. Been getting a lot of DMs, been getting a lot of emails, a lot of questions. Brady, what about IGTV? What do we need to do with this as churches? Let's first define what IGTV is. Maybe you know the name, you've heard it been said. What actually is it, Alex? Well, it kind of came out of nowhere. For a couple days, we were hearing rumors of Instagram's about to introduce capability to upload up to an hour long video. But further than that, we didn't hear anything. And then that was for about two days, about 48 hours. And then Instagram held kind of like a keynote presentation similar to like what you'd see Google or Apple do. And this guy got up on stage and he said, introducing IGTV. And so it's really, really interesting. And I love the concept. And I've had a hard time like responding to these DMs that you and I are both getting because it's like, I don't really know the best way to use it yet because it just it's here and we're all just trying to figure it out. And so a lot of people are trying to repurpose content and like previously um, shot content and throw it on IGTV. And so trying to figure out the best way to use it. But what it is, this is how it works. It kind of has two platforms. So you can find it natively within the Instagram app and it'll be right to the left of your your direct message logo on the top right of your screen. You'll see a little uh, orange logo and it's IGTV. And so you click on it and a new screen comes up And it's a way to interact with video um, that's very unique to Instagram now. And so, and we're going to get into this later in the episode, but Instagram says you can upload up to an hour long video here and it's vertical content. That's how it's designed. And there's uh, a tab for people you're following. Uh, You can browse and there's also a search feature, but there's also a a totally separate IGTV app, Mm -hmm. which is the same interface as if you were getting to it natively through Instagram, but it's got its own app. And so I'm not really sure about the application for the unique app, but it it's, I mean, it looks identical. It operates the same way. And I think the possibilities for, for churches, for, for businesses, for anyone who's on social media and especially on Instagram are just like, like the doors have just been blown wide open. I'm really excited about this, but that's kind of the Coles notes version of what IGTV is. The question I get all the time when a new, social platform drops is, Brady, how are we as churches supposed to use this? And my default position is always like hedge, which is, well, I follow the attention. So let's see what happens. Even this episode, IGTV has been out for about a month now. We haven't really publicly talked about it until now. And as of this recording, I haven't even published, we haven't published anything on IGTV just because we're taking things slow and I have a set strategy for social media. Right. And just because a new platform pops up, it doesn't mean that I immediately have like rubberneck syndrome and go, well, let's go over there, new shiny object. It's like, well, wait a minute, let me play with this platform a bit. I've downloaded it, I've played with it. Okay, here's what it's all about. Here's what it seems like the trends are. How can this fit into our overall strategy? Mm -hmm. And so in this episode, we're not gonna tell you your church needs to be on IGTV. What we're gonna tell you is, here are the things you need to know about IGTV. It's very important that you understand the basics of the platform, that doesn't mean you need to use it. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean you need to take away resources from Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, because those are established platforms. Right. Means you need to probably download IGTV, know what it's about, and then react based on your unique strategy. Yeah. So let's talk about all the things that you need to know. We're gonna give you that briefer right now. Firstly, let's talk about some stats that Instagram shared in their keynote when they announced IGTV. Exactly. Firstly, teens are watching 40% less television than they did five years ago and Even that, despite that, on Instagram, users are watching 60% more video than they did last year. This is a great illustration of the communication shift that we are going through right now. Yeah, and I watched that keynote live, and and so they were using these stats to say, like, teens aren't watching less video, they're just Mm. watching it differently, and so they're watching it less, you know, on, on cable TV, but they're watching it much more on a portrait, like, vertical orientation on their phone, and so enter IGTV. Exactly. So... Alex already mentioned a couple of these things. We'll cover them again. Videos must be vertical when you upload them Mm -hmm. to IGTV. So we're talking nine by 16 aspect ratio, 15 seconds to 10 minutes in length for smaller accounts, 15 seconds to 60 minutes in length for larger accounts. 
Or is it? <laughs> no one really knows. For right. instance, if I go to upload a video to IGTV on my mobile device, mm -hmm. it will say there is a 10 minute limit. If I go to desktop on Instagram.com, log into my at Brady Shear Instagram account, go to the IGTV tab on Instagram.com on desktop, right. and go to upload a video, it says I have a 60 minute limit. <laughs> I thought maybe because I'm above that 10,000 followers threshold, right. I'm not a verified account. I'm not one of these partnered collaborators mm -hmm. with IGTV. Why do I get this 60 minute limit? Or at least why do I get what says to be a 60 minute right. limit? I haven't tested that, that's just what it says. Yeah. But then I saw on a Facebook thread today, someone who had just a couple of hundred followers and they had the same thing. So check for yourself, because I'd like to know, it doesn't seem like I couldn't find an answer to this definitively online. We may be able to upload up to, up to 60 minutes if you go directly to desktop, hmm. which is something to consider. It sounds similar to like when Twitter uh, introduced the, the 240 character limit. Like I remember when, when that happened, I got it before anyone else in the mm. office and for no reason. I was like brand new to Twitter at the time. Yes. I got 240 characters. I'm like, I don't know what to do with all these. And then that feature disappeared for a couple days for me and then it came back and then people, it just, you know, so when a new feature or a new app in this instance gets, gets rolled out, sometimes these features are a little buggy That's and true. they get rolled out in different ways. So we're we're just trying to figure it out. MP4 file format okay. is what you want to upload. Less than 3.6 gigabytes. You could also choose a cover photo. Which is really, really cool. Like you would choose a thumbnail on YouTube. Yeah. Got to be JPEG. 4K video is supported. And this is much better than Instagram stories where you'll craft a beautiful video, upload it, and then Instagram will compress it all the way to hell, yeah. basically, yeah. and say, well, this is what it looks like now. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to get a nice looking image that's not overly compressed, which right. is nice. So if you're shooting in 4K and you've worked really hard at it, it's gonna still look nice. It does give you analytics. Views count when they are longer than three seconds okay. in length. IGTV like, IGGTV, man, <laughs> acronyms, am I right? IGTV <laughs> comes with a standalone app like Alex said, but it also integrates directly into Instagram. So you'll wanna download it so that Instagram integration is native for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Instagram TV, IGTV comes with comments. So if you post a video, there will be comments that people can add, right. which is similar to a post on Instagram, but it feels like an Instagram story with comments. Yeah, it's like worlds colliding. Yeah, so yeah. that's new and fresh. I, I asked Brandon, who works in the office here, who's posted a bunch to IGTV already, what's his experience been? He's like, yeah, the comments are really nice. You get to interact, where normally I would post that on stories and I'd only get DMs. Right. Now I have public comments where everyone can interact, community collaboration style. Awesome. All the videos when you enter the app autoplay without audio. And this is important to know, because if you do something at the very first three to five seconds that's right. important, it's likely if it's audio based, word spoken based, no one will hear it. Mm -hmm. So that's just something to consider. It's it's kind of an annoying part of the interface because you'll see a video you like and then you'll click back into it and you'll like scrub back to the right. beginning to hear it. Yeah. So that's not really like super user intuitive. Maybe you wanna leave those first five seconds of you like waving or like, you know, a quick little intro yeah. and then jump in to the actual speaking part might be something to Makes consider. Sense. IGTV has its own guide released by Instagram. We'll have it linked in the show notes. It's about a 40 page PDF where they talk about all the ins and outs, the specs, how to create, mm -hmm. everything that you need to know. So if you're looking for an actual written guide, Instagram came out with one. How to use it? Well, the one church that I've seen use it so far is surprisingly Elevation. Of course. And what they did was they took a, 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 a clip from one of Stephen Furtick's messages. Normally they, they do this a minute or less on Instagram, but they did a full three minutes. Right. A couple things to note about this clip that I saw. One, Elevation is already working in 4K, filming their services with like four different cameras. Yes. So they've got three minutes of footage and they've got multiple cameras. The nice thing about a church is that even if you're shooting widescreen, there's a single subject in the frame yeah. preaching. So you can repurpose that. You can crop that to nine by 16. Exactly. Because it's just a person standing on stage. Yeah. The Pro Church vlog cannot be repurposed for IGTV. Right. We can't just crop it because we cut out most of the frame, but when you are recording your pastor speaking, it's just one person standing up. That's perfect for that aspect ratio, so you can crop it. Even within this three minute video clip though, there was another video clip embedded within it right. from the message. So even this native usage of IGTV, or not so native usage, repurpose usage, had multiple camera angles, and not just a person talking, talking head, but another video clip embedded within. So a lot of work went into this. I wouldn't say, and Brandon said this, and I'll, re I'll reiterate here and pass it along, IGTV 
if nothing less than because of the vertical video format, it's not really a platform where you're gonna wanna repurpose footage, no. repurpose content, because for most use cases, you won't be able to. Right. Interestingly, the one use case where you might be able to repurpose it's it. Is past or pre -ting. Which is what you likely <laughs> may only already be filming as yeah. is. So yeah. that's actually probably a little bit advantageous for churches. Yeah, and that's a problem we saw like a lot of small businesses running into or other services when IGTV was first released. They just kind of took content that they already had, repurposed it and, and threw it up. And most of it was, you know, 16 by nine horizontal, you know, landscape video. And it wasn't really working and so for the first like couple days there it's like my IGTV feed was just like a mess it's like yeah. I can't watch any of this because this is just old content that other people are just throwing up just to give it a shot uh, but yeah for churches we have an advantage because a lot of the content that we're probably going to be wanting to put on IGTV is a pastor teaching and we can crop that 9 by 16 and probably make it look pretty good so we're, we're poised in a pretty good position here as churches to, to leverage this new platform bottom line don't feel the need or the necessity rubberneck syndrome shiny object yeah. syndrome to depart from the social platforms that are established and already have attention and already have been around for a while and then use those resources to invest in IGTV. Mm -hmm. Play around with it. Look through that Instagram guide that they released that we mentioned. Listen, watch an episode of Pro Church Daily like this and then as we see IGTV continue to gain momentum because I do think that it's here to stay. Yeah. If nothing else, it is going to be springboarded by all the attention and the billion plus users on Instagram. See what it's about and then invest as needed or as necessary based on your existing social strategy. But don't just jump from one thing to another because that is not helpful to sustainable success on social for your church. Mm -hmm. That'll do it for this episode of Pro Church Daily. We'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Pro Church Daily. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and enable notifications so you never miss another Pro Church Daily. And don't be shy. Hit the like button so we know you enjoyed this video. Don't be that person that just watches every day. You know who you are. And you never comment. Okay, at least like the video. Hit the like button. Smash it.